Have you ever had a woman looking at you for more than two seconds? It's like time freezes, right? What is going on in her mind? While sometimes you wish you could stare forever, that becomes forbidden because even a second too long and it's a different story entirely. Think about it. One moment only and gone? Or eyes meet and hold? What is it with this experience we get from looking at each other? As long as you're watching this video, the human connection is not going to become real because it's not the real person. It's a picture of a person. And even if we play it, there is nothing at stake on your end. Attraction depends on what your eye lands on, but it also has to do with math. Thematical ratios. A golden ratio to be precise. In a class photo, everyone have the same facial elements, and yet none of them are identical. For a person you like, no less. That's because the eyes and nose and mouth and eyebrows, forehead, chin, cheek and the shape of her head and the hair has got you captivated. And this applies whether you're 5 years old or 93. Women were made to attract men and men to attract women. It's that simple. The difficult part is how to send the message and uh, as we'll see, how to read it. Toddlers would act straight out because they don't know what rejection is. In school, you'd get a friend to ask on your behalf, while the older you get, that option begins to wear off and you're on your own. Or nowadays there is apps on your phone, and doubtless the people have even gotten married, but an app doesn't bring you any closer to finding someone better than what you can manage yourself. That's not how this works, attraction can hit you when you least expect it. Besides, if you know anything about women, you know that we are supposed to know what they're thinking, and if you rely on social media or browsing through her photos, which I'm sure you have done, those things aren't doing a very good job. Real tension is when it takes you two or three or four years to say hello to someone because of fear of the unknown. Or excitement, whichever. Which brings us to attraction goes beyond a person's appearance. You know what you're looking for, and while this video is in no way a guide on how to date, what do I know? But it's been tested that 4 minutes of uninterrupted eye contact will increase intimacy. That's because looking triggers emotions, and we're primed to mirror behaviors. Though I'm not saying this means this or do this if she looks at you like that. What I am saying is that because of the connection we get from staring, there is a universalishness to it and we can get pretty close because there is a difference between a smile and a smile. For the most part, an expression remains a snapshot on your mind, unless you catch her looking at you, or how long, and now you get to see what a real smile looks like. Instead of saying hello, a woman can stare at you until she has your attention, and uh, when she does, did you catch that? It's a bit difficult to see from afar. There we go. Exactly what combinations of actions and behaviors and body language and looks and choice of words and tone that translates into what inside her head is the gray area where we don't know what's being friendly and what's being interested. And for as long as there is time, we probably never will. Most people want to appear friendly, and uh, anything past that is usually very subtle, so if you don't catch it the first time or the second time, or the th then when you eventually do, things begin to make sense. And then your pulse begins to increase, but more on that later. You can even flirt with other guys as long as you know what you're doing. A woman not showing any obvious signals can be interested, while the one who flirts and follows you home is just an open person. How am I supposed to tell the difference between these two? Also, if you are oblivious, you are unaware of your surroundings. It's like a curse that blinds you from the truth. Obliviousness can develop to a problem, because what you believe is a hangout turns out to be a date. And now you have to hold hands for an hour and 40 minutes. Are you aware of how sweaty that becomes? That one gains a layer of complexity if she bought the ticket. But I think the real issue is that we don't want to break it to her because it'll make you feel horrible. Obliviousness works the other way as well. If Vicky is beautiful leaves you silent because yes, she is, then you like her, don't you? Huh? It's going to make you nervous the next time you see Vicky. Spoken words is but 10% of what we communicate. The other 90 can translate, so I guess I'll see you around to something like, we should go out sometime, because why didn't you say goodbye instead if approaching her in the first place? 
Asking someone out comes with strings attached, because of the commitment, but also the flaws and the quirks that we don't see. If you're short like I am, you just need to kiss upwards instead of downwards. And then there's heels, but then again, attraction isn't based solely on appearance, it's based on spending time together. For example, hanging out could turn somebody you didn't notice earlier into, I've never seen her like this before, wow. Or ask a woman what she thinks about a man in the suit. It isn't illegal to respond, just stay within legal boundaries. Like, one time I was doing the slate, and because of the circumstances, exterior, fire escape, staircase, I had to hug this actress prior to every take until the director was happy. So indeed, but apparently, it's the best thing that happened to me today, and the eye contact after that moment. You still need to break a barrier, but ruining a friendship that way wouldn't normally happen. If anything, try and reverse the situation and imagine the world in case of rejection. Your current state in life, because attraction can hit you when you least expect it, which makes it a blessing and a curse. So if this turns out to work, you need to change your lifestyle, because now you're seeing each other. Except forbidden love is an obstacle if into someone at work, but it's not as dramatic as it used to be, so if going out, you just need some rules. In the old days, people got executed if seeing someone they couldn't have, like people from a different rank in society. This may sound ancient, but Romeo and Juliet is the reason for why men in the 21st century are nicknamed Romeo when they're in love. And up until 1967, it was still illegal for a black person and a white person to marry in 16 states. So all those hours you spend watching online videos, you now have to find time for a movie or dinner or long walks on the beach, but that is what they call trouble. Two people finding each other is filled with joy and excitement either way. For example, once upon a time in a theme park, a couple of parking attendants had met, and the guests in that section had experienced free parking because, well, the ones supposed to collect the money were busy elsewhere. The couple received an award and were told that the ones receiving that one last year were now married. How can it be dangerous though to ask someone out? So it's not actually dangerous, it's fear of being rejected. The act of making a moment real involves adrenaline, and adrenaline makes you nervous. You can analyze the situation all you want, but if you don't make a move, you will never know, and that's still a choice. A crush is a mental image that you start imagining from eye contact, sometimes even before. Also, fantasizing happens even more inside relationships as for all of the things you haven't yet done. If you ask her, she might actually have a list. Rejection is the process of breaking your heart, hopefully only as a metaphor, but they come in two versions, because if you're in love, those are real feelings getting hurt, but better those than getting executed, because after the breakup, you'd still have the option to move on. Rejection from a crush can still hurt, but that's only your imagination. When I did my undergrad, a woman had memorized my schedule, and it was three months where I was sure I was gonna lose my mind. Was I supposed to have asked her out? Yes! Oh, why not? Her presence accelerates your heart until you can feel the pulse in your head, and you know that this is going to fail. Nevertheless, that night I went with it, but I also found that the movie she was watching ran in three theaters at once. I would wait, and three hours later, I finally met a colleague, accompanied with another colleague. What are you still doing at work? A couple of years later, I made this story into a short. You need to turn tables, people. It was changed to a restaurant by then. We had over 10 guests waiting last night. I put the woman he wanted away from camera so that the lead would first gain attention really into that girl, aren't you? from her friend. Getting some help from his colleague, he gains the confidence to tell her, You have beautiful eyes. Thank you. I'll have the spare ribs with mashed potatoes and carrots. And all the ricotta and spinach tortellini? Uh, what just happened? There's nothing wrong about being insecure. Some women actually find that attractive, but getting your message across might take you a while longer. Some people even approach the second prettiest to get the prettiest attention. 
A couple of months later, I finally succeeded in breaking the barrier of a friendship, and yes, I paid this time, thank you for asking. But wait, nothing happened that night, not even holding hands. The women aren't as innocent as they look. So her friend calls her the following morning and You went out with Simon last night, did he kiss you? Simon was getting help from his allies, but that was two weeks later, because that's what it would take for the woman to... Thanks for watching.